What's up everybody, it's Real Cool Adventures. We're off the shore of Palm Beach, Florida, and we're trying to catch dolphin, small tuna, and pretty much anything that we can eat during this pandemic. We know it's gonna be hard to get food, so we're gonna give it a shot and see what's out here. We had no idea it was gonna be this rough. We just came out like we always do. We didn't watch the news. What we're using today is a small little teeny baby squid bait. We're gonna see if we can catch a giant monster octopus right now. What I'm trying to do is distance all these baits. I'm gonna keep one short, one about another 40, 50 feet back behind the other bait, and I'm gonna shotgun one way out the back. You know how I know that these baits are gonna catch something? Right there, because they're made in China. <laughs> See that swordfish? Just kidding. Gotta keep the spirits up, tons like this. Gotta be happy. Positive motivation. All right, guys. Got something small bouncing. I think it's probably a small tuna. Uh, a little rough. We're gonna find out right now. So the thing is, we weren't getting any bites, so we downsized to these little teeny hooks. And when you do that, you can't just keep that forward momentum going because you're gonna rip the inside corner of the fish's mouth, drag it, he's gonna shake off. So what I'm doing is I turn the boat a little bit, I'm gonna pull the throttle back. We're gonna reel it in and see what it is. I'm just trying to keep constant, steady pressure on it, right in the corner of the mouth. During this epidemic and tough time, we're not trying to let anything go. If it has eyes, it fries. Feels like a little, little tuna fish. A little toony tune. Not fighting very hard. I'm just trying to keep steady pressure on it. I've already drug it a little bit. Whoa, just came back to life there. Acting like something's chasing it. Oh wow. Well. Might be a little skipjack tuna. See what it is here. So I'm trying to just turn the boat a little bit. Now I'm gonna do is kind of cut it into the wind. Trying not to get my finger cut off. Swimming at the boat. This fish is acting real erratic, like maybe it's getting chased by something. Only these little fish don't jump around that much. We got a small gaff, Jeff. Uh, I don't think we're going to need the gaff. Pause on the gaff. It's small. It's really tiny. All right. That is called a skipjack tuna. If you've ever eaten tuna in a can, there's a good chance that's what you're eating right there. Oh, we just turned this into a crime scene video. Watch your feet. Something bad should happen. <laughs> oh. We'll just say that this shirt is tie-dyed. So we ran about 10, 15 miles offshore and it got really rough because obviously we didn't watch the weather. We came in a little shallower and we found a little weed line. It's kind of sporadic, but we're gonna go ahead and troll down that and see if we can find something. Uh, it was a little bumpy and rough, so we're just gonna take our gamble and uh, we'll see you in a minute when we catch something. I just had a bite. Or I'm dying to catch a fish so bad that every time a piece of weed hits the line, I'm... You know when you see that royal blue water and the flying fish are everywhere? That's what I'd like to see. We might turn this into a, a sargasm salad video in a minute. We don't get a bite. If you can't catch anything offshore, you just come in here shallow and you troll a little feather, anything small that uh, looks similar to a glass minnow or a small baby flying fish. You put one line way out and you just literally zigzag in and out of the reef. All right, we're back on. 
All you do is let it out. Just like that. Jeff, you do it. You drive for me. Go ahead and give me a little bit of a. What rod is that? A little bit of a right hand turn. And this has got to be driving those guys nuts because we're just sitting here doing circles around them catching fish. This is a better fish here. Yeah, it's definitely a bigger fish. Little head shakes. What it is is all these fish are migrating by right now. They're in giant schools. And basically, you're just cutting back and forth in and out over them, picking them off one at a time. But we can't play any games right now because we need dinner. Small blackfin tuna. You can catch the bigger ones on live bait, but we couldn't get bait. We got a late start. And you can just sit, if you have kids or something with you and you need to catch something, it's a fast, easy way to be consistent. Put meat on the table. That is a, what they call them footballs, because it's shaped like a football. More splatter proof shirt. I'm gonna stick it on ice, and we'll go home and eat it. I don't care where in the world you are, if you put something small a mile back, you're gonna catch fish. I don't care if it's 12 in the afternoon, if it's a full moon, small moon, cold water, hot water, cold front, high pressure, low pressure, no pressure. That's all you do, is just put something a mile back, because it looks realistic, it's back there. There's no boat driving over the fish's face. Now we'll go ahead and let it out. What I'm doing is I'm making a right-hand turn. I'm putting this line out, and I'm gonna get it as far back as possible. So this bait looks like a little lone flying fish in the middle of nowhere. And uh, see you in a minute. We're on them now. Woo! Feel them digging like a post hole digger. We're building the fence. All right, pull back throttle a little bit. Give me a little more left. Just gonna drive right up to this. Things, things are biting like this. We're just gonna keep catching them, driving over, throwing them in the cooler. We're all about meat right now. We're going through a pandemic situation. Can't go to the grocery store. We want some fresh fish. Slow down a little bit. You're about to run it over. It'll come up. How deep are we? 138 feet. Every bite we've had has been right on the outside edge of the reef here and the water was literally two or three degrees colder out a little deeper. Made all the difference in the world. And that's it though. I don't care if it's early in the morning, middle of the afternoon, you wanna catch something and get a bite. This is one of the most consistent ways to constantly put table fare, fish, whatever you wanna call it, meat in the box. They all add up, okay? It's not a 30 pound fish, not a 40 pound fish. Five pounds, five pounds. Catch four or five of them. Do the math on that. <laughs> Be like three pounds. There he is, another blackfin. Yeah. Nice little football. Keep adding up like paychecks. These are like fish paychecks. Now we're gonna put them in a saltwater brine. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of salt water, put them in there, make it kind of like a slushy. Um, if I had gaffed these fish, I wouldn't do that because the water would go in the hole and, and tear up the meat. But we just flipped these in the boat, so hang on. Let me grab that bucket. So. All we're doing now is we're adding a little bit of salt water to these fish, and that'll keep them, their whole body equally cool. That's it, just a little bit of salt water that'll tighten, up, tighten them up. It's real important you keep these nice and cold. Now, the big guys up north, if you're catching a bigger tuna, you wouldn't want them to really touch the water. You'd want them in ice all the way around like a slushy, but these little guys, 
it doesn't matter. These guys. Hope you enjoyed that. We came out here, caught what we needed, and we'll see you in the kitchen. I'm gonna grab a fish out, throw it on there and clean it real quick. Jeff, you think I can figure out how to clean it? We have everybody on our channel, on our YouTube page, talking. talking. Yeah, they're all like ragging on me. Tell me I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Where'd oh. the big one go? It's in the bottom of the ice. I'm gonna try to keep them cold, so. There's three of them. I'm right, gonna make this. Set down the slide off as easy as possible. You just simply go in like this. Come through like that. Come down the back, just like any other fish. Come through. That's it. Now we're done. No, just kidding. That's it. I'm gonna take our fillet here. I'm gonna come down the back, cut that bloodline out. Now some people like to bleed these out when they catch them. Um, we were pressed for time and I don't really think it's that critical when they're that small. If these tuna were bigger, absolutely. I would have poked it underneath the pectoral fin here and, and bled this fish out and the meat would be noticeably lighter, but we're gonna eat this fairly soon. So I'm not too worried about it. I'll just follow it down like that. Trim these ribs out. Basically these loins are what we're eating. These skinny, elongated loins. I'm gonna rip that off, throw that to the catfish. What I like to do is just come down the bloodline like so, at an angle. Okay, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna push this through. And that's it. That is a black fin tuna loin. Take it like that. Take this one, come up, trim that out, feed that to the catfish. There's our two tuna loins. I don't know if you can see it in the sunlight like so. Now, compared to other tuna, it's fairly similar. The only thing is, as far as blackfin tuna don't last as long in the market. That's why you don't see a lot of them in the market. They start to change color and they're not presentable. But to me, if you have them within the first, second, or third day, you can't really taste the difference, especially when they're small like this. So we'll see you in the kitchen now. All right, everybody, welcome back to Real Cool Adventures. This is Cam, the cameraman, and I'm gonna show you guys my recipe for tuna pokey. All right, so basically you have a couple ingredients. The basic ingredients that it always has is a fresh fish, onions, some soy sauce, sesame oil, the additions, I like to use nature seasoning, the best seasoning in the world. A little chili powder just to add a little bit of spice. And then I like to add cucumbers and some melon. Just, it helps kind of fill it in uh, as it mixes with all the sauce. It kind of takes on that same consistency as the tuna. Kind of has like the same flavor and just kind of feels the same. So if you don't really have as much fish, you can add in these extras and it kind of fills up the bowl and makes it a little bit bigger for you. Basically you start, Got your fresh tuna here. Throw in your onions. Okay. I don't think I need all of them. Throw in your cucumbers. So you have green cucumbers, uh, white onions. And cucumbers, kind of the onion? onions I use, I use those little onions, those little sweet onions. Okay. Uh, they just don't really have as much bite. Uh, if you use those purple onions that you usually use in ceviche or something, I find it's a little bit too much. Okay. That, that bite's a little too much in there. Um, so those little sweet ones are good. Um, this is a uh, honey dude melon. Mm. Yeah. Got your soy sauce here. Give it a couple little, little squirts. Some chili powder. Add that in to taste. I like things a little spicy. So kick it up a notch. Nature seasoning. Can't overdo that. Yeah, just pour it on in there. And this is a key ingredient, sesame oil. This gives you that, uh, that kind of Asian flavor. This is an Asian inspired dish. Don't be shy with it. Just kind of dump it in there. Just shake it until you feel it. And then we stir it up. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm usually the one tasting all the nasty stuff that Mike's catching. Uh, this will probably be the best tasting meal that we've had so far. Uh, if any of you guys at home have a specific recipe that you know you like to use for your pokey, your poke balls, uh, yeah, different. let us know. If you have let us know. Style. You can pretty much add anything in there. Um, there's a couple basics: the onion. Um, you know, you can add in some fruit. You can add in other vegetables. Have you ever tried other different species or different types of fish? I do it with uh, wahoo a lot. Tuna, and that's. If I'm gonna use like snapper or golden tilefish or something like that, usually I'll make a ceviche out of it instead. Um, I think wahoo and tuna are the best. You can do salmon, but I don't really like doing sushi stuff out of salmon here in Florida because it just it's been shipped and it's been caught like probably a month ago somewhere. Uh, just by the looks of it, throw a little soy sauce in there. Why not? And that's it. Voila. Let's go ahead and simmer down now. Let's see what it's like here. Oh, it's tangy. The heck? Are these like trick ones? Look at that. Nope. There's another, another tip. Don't put your chopsticks in the dishwasher. Oh, that's great. That's good. That's really good. This is good. It's like... Oh, that's good. I'll do this again. I'm going to steal this recipe. This is awesome. You've got a variety of flavor in there. you got a little... It's really hot, good. A little sweet. You don't have to let it set very long. You just mix it up and eat it right away. And I can't, this fish for one thing is nice and fresh. We caught it yesterday. You know, we let it sit on ice all night. Um, these little footballs, whether it's a yellow fin, black fin, skipjack tuna, in my opinion, they all taste the same when they're little footballs. This flavor camouflages it so well. This is really good. I highly recommend it. I think we need to do this one again. Mm. Well, I'm going to bore you with it because we're going to go ahead and eat. And I can't, we're getting tired. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Be sure to uh, hit the notification button, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And uh, we'll see you on the next adventure. <laughs>